Okay, so basics of a anti-roll plate. So you always want to check this edge here. Make sure you don't have any buildup because sometimes OCT can get stuck on that bottom edge. And what I always do is just keep a piece of gauze in the machine and occasionally in between sections just kind of pinch along the edge and wipe it clean. It's all sorts of dusty. Now this isn't actually tissue, so it's not going to perform as well as actual tissue. And what I usually do is I will leave a mark, like I'll put where center is, and then on the dial itself, I will put a mark for where it works best. that glare is going to be a problem. There we go. Okay. So when it comes under, that bottom part might fold and you always want to cut into where you have opened it up. And this is more like a fatty piece so kind of get it started and then do one quick. You know, that's for extreme fat. Other ones you want to actually have like a more slow, um, I've got another one that I'll show. It's kind of like a uh, second layer. Um, and then this is one part that most some people kind of goof up on is you don't want to pull the roll plate up too fast because that will actually lift it and you just use your brushes to kind of tease out this isn't my actual brush so forgive tease out that and press it down and then like I said this isn't tissue so it's separating at the top where it would stick. Um, how to actually adjust it though. Knowing if you need to move it forward or if you need to move it back. That's where the expertise lies. So let's say it is way too far forward. Or, yeah, forward. You will actually see the block hit and it'll bunch up way in the front. But you can actually hear it, you know, lately tap on the glass. And you might actually be able to see the roll plate lift a little. That's why I like first thing, first block in the morning, if you're using a roll plate, don't ever cut real fast because you can break or damage it. Now, if it is too far forward or too far back, And just put it right back on perfect. If it's too far back, what you'll get is it will roll up in front. And then as you get closer to home, This is why I like the Avantic and Micron style. They're very, very forgiving versus like a Leica. Let's see if we can get a partial. So that sharp fold, it didn't curl, it actually folded it over. That means it's, it's close. There, that's how it bunched up on this side, but it's starting to work on this side. That's typically how it'll start when you know you're getting close to it. And then a little bit further out, and just like that. So now like that, um, let's see if I can't make it do that again. It's just like with a nicked, a nicked blade or, um, you know, if there's like a calcium deposit. Of course, now it's not going to do it again. But it's just like having a nicked blade that will uh, put a, you know, a small rip or something in your ribbon. Um, 
that's where you might have a build up on the back side of the roll plate um, and you can you can feel you know if there is a uh, chip or a gouge mark on it um, this is why I like the Avantics Avantic style is you can see the ridge right there and not so much on the other side but that little ridge lifts it up just a little bit and you can actually use these even if they're in rough shape um, so uh, yeah it's literally just backwards and forwards using this little turn dial and like this one um, that got smeared from alcohol but um, this would be my setting for if I'm cutting fat and I'm cutting way thicker um, I would switch over to that one but for everything else um, once you get it set you can put a little home position marker I just use a little skin marker uh, just like they use in the room for marking specimens or like a lesion before they take the layer um, and it comes off with alcohol um, and just put a little mark on your arm there for you know center and then just line those up um, and you can some specimens you have to tweak it one way this way a little bit that way um, but with the Avantic and Micron styles these are actually very very forgiving and now I'm gonna switch over um, actually for the for the second layers uh, you can see it under there the blue you want to process them like that. You want to process them vertical. Not, you know, some people say at an angle or this or that, but like let's say this is the epidermis side. If you process it straight up and down, that's that won't curl. Um, it should stay completely flat. If you process it like this, you're going to get some rolling up towards the top here. You process it, you know, say you do it, you know like that you're gonna get the entire edge of the epidermis to roll down but if you process it vertical it should keep everything linear and then I always trim my blocks um, because you don't want rounded edges because what can happen is the anti roll plate the further out you go it can grab that one side and it'll kinda like pinch and the whole specimen will bunch up um, so I always make, you know, once I've faced into it, or even before I faced it, if it's a second layer like this, I'll go ahead and just cut straight lines using like a prep blade. Um, and that helps with uh, rolling and then bunching up on the uh, anti-roll plate. Anyways, hope this helps.